Is wearing glasses genetic? Just because you wear glasses doesn't mean that your kids are gonna need them, or just because your parents are wearing glasses, does that mean you're going to have that same fate? I'm gonna answer all of those questions coming right up. I'm Dr. Rupa Wong, board certified ophthalmologist. And on this channel, we talk about eye health, eye surgery, and a little bit of eye makeup health. But today we are talking about eye health. Not only am I an ophthalmologist, I'm actually a pediatric ophthalmologist, fellowship trained. So what that means is I take care of a lot of children, and this is where glasses really impacts. So if you are dying to know if you are going to have to wear glasses because your parents do, I'm gonna answer that right now. So first, let's start out with all the different reasons to need glasses. There's nearsightedness, also called myopia, farsightedness, which is also called hyperopia, and then there's astigmatism. People that are nearsighted or myopic need glasses to see far away, but they can see up close just fine. And then the opposite is true for people who are farsighted or hyperopic. They typically need glasses to see up close. And this is not quite the same thing as if you are over 40 and start to need reading glasses. Farsightedness means you started needing those glasses earlier on. And if you're really, really farsighted, it actually can even affect your distance vision as well. And then astigmatism, well, I have an entire video on what is astigmatism, and that's basically the shape of your cornea changes the way that the light is reflected onto your retina. So that's another reason to need glasses. So which of these is genetic? Well, they kind of all are. It's not straightforward autosomal dominant or autosomal recessive, if you remember Mendel and the peas and all of that stuff that you learned in seventh grade biology. It's not quite that, but there are many, many gene loci. In fact, there are almost 67 gene loci that have been identified alone just for nearsightedness or myopia and family history. So they are trying to figure out when it is genetic. Now they've definitely found for people that are highly myopic, and that's anyone that's over a minus six, they have found a lot of those genes. But for people that are mild or moderately myopic, like you just become nearsighted as you know, you're progressing through school, that's not as clear cut, but it definitely does tend to run in families. When they look at different countries across the world and different races and ethnicities, they found that in parts of Asia and Southeast Asia, 80 to 90% of the adults are nearsighted, but that's not just related to genetic factors. It's really multifactorial. So what that means is it's a combination of your genes as well as the types of things that you do. So this is where if you are spending not enough time outdoors or spending a lot of time doing up close work, and that's what they think in these countries, there's a lot of pressure for educational success. So like kids are just really being made to study a lot. They're taken to tutoring after school. So they are doing a lot of reading and studying. So that kind of environmental factor, we call it environmental, even though they're not outdoors, but that kind of risk factor can make you nearsighted in and of itself. So just because your parents are nearsighted doesn't doom you to the same fate. If both of your parents are nearsighted, well, there's actually a one in two or 50% chance that you will need glasses as well. So it's not 100%. Now, if only one of your parents is nearsighted, then you have a one in three chance of becoming nearsighted as well. And if neither of your parents is nearsighted, there's still a one in four or 25% chance that you might need glasses for myopia or nearsightedness. Like I said, it is a lot of different combination of factors that influence whether or not you need glasses, but it does tend to run in families. It's not a hard and fast, my parents have glasses, so I 100% am going to need them. Now this is important because as I mentioned, high myopia is minus 6.00 diopters and higher. And that carries with it a lot of risk factors for blinding conditions, things like choroidal neovascular membranes, retinal detachments, myopic maculopathy, cataracts, glaucoma, a lot of stuff that can happen if you're really, really nearsighted 
And so we'd like to know that early on so that we can start instituting in young kids some of those myopia prevention treatments like low-dose atropine or the mycite contact lens or even orthokeratology. All right, so what about astigmatism? So just like anything that's familiar, like if you are tall or short, likely you inherited that from your parents or if you have blonde hair or black hair, or your skin color. And the same is with astigmatism. So what happens in astigmatism is the cornea is shaped a little bit different more like you cut the top of an egg or a football off instead of cutting off the top of a basketball. So it stands to reason that if you have that particular shape, that's something that you can pass down to your kids or inherit from your parents. Now, there are a bunch of conditions which cause a lot of irregular astigmatism. One of them is keratoconus, which is really pretty common, and that's really strongly familial. But Outside of keratoconus, astigmatism, again, is just kind of like nearsightedness, loosely familial, runs in families, but it's not hard and fast just because your mom or your dad have it, you're 100% going to get it. But that being said, I do tend to see a lot of kids in my practice, and when I find that they have astigmatism or maybe the astigmatism is worse in one eye versus another, then the parents sitting right there will say, oh yeah, I've, I've got astigmatism on le my left side too. So. The data really does show, again, that it's just familial, but they haven't identified the specific genes responsible for astigmatism yet. The same is true for farsightedness. It runs in families. When you are farsighted, your eyeball is a little bit shorter than people who are not farsighted, or your cornea is curved a little bit flatter than others. So the light is getting directed behind the retina. And so though it does tend to run in families, it's not a specific mom is farsighted, so I'm 100% going to be farsighted. But your underlying genetics definitely play a major role on whether or not you have refractive error. So I guess this is a kind of, right? So yes, a lot of times it can be inherited, but it's not 100%. And even when both parents are nearsighted, it's only a one in two chance that you are going to be nearsighted as well. So I hope this information was helpful for you guys. If you wouldn't mind taking a moment and liking and subscribing, commenting below if you are nearsighted, farsighted, or have astigmatism, and if your kids are, or if your parents are, we can see how these are running in families. Until next time, I am Dr. Rupa. It's good to see you. Bye-bye.